Hi, I'm Aviva. I'm a textile designer and a lifestyle brand creative director. I'm based in Southern California and I celebrate textiles. It's been a practice of mine and a meditation of mine for many years. And I welcome you to join me on my journey in exploring textiles. Today, I'm celebrating something from my tradition. I'm half Japanese. We're uh, a long generation uh, family of makers. I'm going to be doing uh, a practice today called Itajime which is part of the Shibori family of techniques. It's something that uh, runs through my veins. I can't turn it off, and I welcome you to be part of that journey. If you like experimenting with things, big, bold patterns that are geometric, it's something that's amazingly modern, but at the same time connected to the ancients of our history. Um, we are going to start today with uh, fabric, some brushes, clamps, uh, rubber bands, pieces of wood, of course, fabric and dye. Join us. Okay, guys, let's get going. Are you ready to make this or something similar? This is super fab. You could turn it into a dress or a scarf or whatever you want. Let's begin by identifying your fabrics and then you can get your materials together. I've created some dye baths in advance and I'm gonna be working with blues and yellows today. I also have some natural dyes that we made and we'll be using those as well. The first thing is, is to find your fabric. And you're going to fold it in a rectangular or square pattern. Depending on the shape of your blocks, you're going to do a similar shape. So let's see. Why don't we do a square shape first? So I had some wood pieces cut down at the hardware store. You can cut them to whatever size you want. I'm gonna take my fabric, fold it, fold it. You can see I'm very, being very precise. Not really. You don't have to be very precise. It's gonna come out gorgeous, trust me. Here's my fabric. Make a wood sandwich. So here we go. Two planks of wood, they come together. Then you get your rubber bands, and I buy a whole bunch of them and not worry about it. And then you're going to put it around as tightly as possible, in any which way you want. It doesn't have to be perfect, or it can be perfect. I am not good at perfect. So I sort of la la la, and put on some tunes and think about the different things that are going on that I'm happy about. Maybe if I'm unhappy about it, I get my stress out like this. Here we go. So sometimes the rubber bands will break and that's okay. Just try to be careful that you don't get snapped and hurt your beautiful face. You could wear safety goggles if, if you wish. Here we go. Okay, there you go. So prepare all your fabrics in whatever shape your wood is. This one you'll fold into a triangle. One, two, don't forget, triangle, triangle and you'll pick up your triangular shapes of wood, like so, and apply them just like we did the squares. If the threads are bothering you, you can cut them off. We'll just toss them away like I just did. Grab your rubber bands, and you'll do the same thing. Cinch it together. If you have clamps or binder clips, you can also use those. and try to do it as tightly as possible. What you're going to be doing is making sure that when you submerge this in dye, that it's so tight that the liquid can't get in there. So I encourage you to go as tight as possible. You can also use string. I also use dental floss with the waxy surface because I don't have to knot it. It sort of sticks to itself sometimes. 
There you go. Let's move on to the next step. On this next step, you might want to grab some gloves. I think that we'll wear gloves on this one. So find a pair of gloves. You can use kitchen gloves. You can use whatever gloves you want. Okay. Then you'll grab the items that you created the fabric and wood sandwiches. You're going to take them and either submerge it all around if you want all the color to be the same, or you can take each dip and use a different color. Let me show you what I mean. Here's the triangle that we did earlier. I'm going to put the long side in this indigo blue. If you're feeling ambitious, you can do two at the same time. Let's just try, let me show you. Here's that square one. I'm gonna dip the square one in the yellow. For me, it's a practice in patience and because I'm a little bit impatient, I like to have a lot going on. So I have my square in the yellow on side. I have my triangle in the blue indigo. Give yourself a count about 10 to 15 and then rotate that triangle. Here we go. And let it set in there. I have about a quarter of an inch of dye and that's done on purpose with the depth to be um, just enough to dye the edge. And you can see that's the amount there. You can see it here too. Just needs to touch the edge. There, I'm gonna dip it in one more time. I'm going to tilt that back because maybe I wanna make sure that it gets through, the dye gets through to all the folds. I'm gonna let that rest there. Again, for me, it's a practice in being impatient. So I'm going to deliberately take my hands off of this one and move on to the next one. This has been sitting here for about 20 to 30 seconds and I'm gonna rotate that one. Here we go. <gasps> Get tidy up. <laughs> I have my brushes ready for the next step where we bump it up to the next level. And then I'm going to rotate that again. So now I have three sides with yellow and I'm going to wait a few moments, check out my work, and check out my triangle. I can take that one out. I'm gonna let that rest for a moment. While I'm working on this other one, I have one more side. I'll turn that around. And I'm going to do something a little bit crazy, which is dip the blue into the yellow. Let's take the yellow out. We'll let her rest right there. And I'm going to make a deep well on the edge here. You can see that. And I'm gonna try and get beyond the blue in depth. Let me show you what I mean. There we go. I'm gonna wash it in there. This will mix the dye colors, so your yellow is going to be affected, but that's okay. If you want your dye colors to remain perfect, don't mix colors. <laughs> there will be messes. It's part of it. That's why we explained in our other episode how to create a clean surface, and that's where your plastic liner comes in, and that's why we have gloves on. And we have towels standing by as well. Okay, so now I put yellow just in the corners. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, let's let that rest. Let's move on to the next step. We'll let these rest for about a half an hour. Okay, we're back. Once you've let your fabric sandwiches with the wood rest, you can start to open them for the big reveal. I let some of mine rest overnight and I let others rest for about an hour. Let's see the difference. Grab your pinchers, pink handle, not necessary, <laughs> and start to cut on the wood, not on the fabric, to open up your bundles.
we're gonna open up the first one. This is my favorite part. This is why I'm addicted to textile design because each one comes out so pretty. Look at the wood, that's pretty too. See the little crisscross on the side? That's neat too. I just love all of this. This was the triangle with the blue indigo and the goldenrod. And look what we made. A gorgeous, brilliant, modern, earthy scarf. We'll let that one dry. Sorry. Let's open up another one. As I mentioned before, not all of them are gonna turn out super wonderful. This one I dyed yesterday also. Careful when you're releasing the rubber bands, they will snap sometimes. Okay. Not sure if this one turned out very well. This one looks pretty dark. Let's see. A bit moody. This would be a good example of not tying tight enough. So, if you want to have something a bit more subtle, however, I would wear this because I like blue, it's my favorite color, but you could see that this is very, very subtle. If you have something that turns out mostly solid with soft suggestions of squares and geometrics, you want to bind your thing a little bit tighter. Okay, let's move on. But again, not ugly. This one is the one which is also from yesterday that I dyed and painted the edges with pigment. And I'll show you how I did that in a few moments. There we go. This was just one color, but I did add pigment. Ooh, I'd wear that. Whoops. Super modern, very tribal. I love that. I hope you enjoyed the first few steps of Itajime Shibori techniques. I always like bumping things up to the next level and using um, the design process to explore new opportunities to celebrate surface design. So what I thought that we could do is to apply a bit of a pop. I have my clamp, my, my wood and fabric sandwich, and it's already been dipped in dye and dried. I'm going to put two sides of the clamps, two sides clamps like this, and I'm gonna grab my faithful little sponge brush and my preferred color, and I'm just going to work on a surface to get some color pigment. And this is just acrylic. And I'm going to gently tap the dye along those creases. And as I finish a side, you will move the clamps to expose the next edge. So let me do that. You could be pretty liberal with it. Got to get in there and paint those edges, the creases. All right, let's do the next one. If you find that it's too far away, you could just move the wood in the clamps. So here's another edge. And you could see I'm going to apply that like so. This is not a precise rocket science moment. This is just a meditation in celebrating textiles and the journey to manipulate them in your own way. So don't get stressed out if you're not applying it perfectly. In fact, I have to re-clamp because I can't get to this one. It's too far inside. So let me open that up and bring it to the edge, like so. There. If I wanted to show more 
or paint more pigment, I'll expose it even further on purpose. So I'm gonna do that on this side. Put the clamps back in place and begin painting. You can even do all your sides a different color if you want it. No rules, just enjoy the process and make sure you get all the little folds nicely. It's kind of too hard, it's not, there, it's very hard to mess this up by putting too much. Just make sure there's no blobs. Smooth it out like so. There we go. Okay, I've done two sides and I'm going to adjust this to do one more side. It's starting to look a bit of a mess, but that's okay. So this side is also exposed. I'm putting this back on and I'm getting the hang of it now and I'm just going to paint that edge as well. And if you have a triangle, you do all three sides. Okay. I'm gonna take my gloves off. I'm a bit more precise that way. You can let this dry overnight to have precise lines, but it's also okay if you wanna open it up. I kind of need the gratification to see what I've done. So I'm gonna delicately, delicately open this up. If you have a friend standing by, have her or him help. And there we go. Let's open up the triangle that we did earlier. Gently, make sure it's dry. And there we go. You've got pops of silver or whatever pigment you added on the crease lines. That's pretty dressy. I would wear that. Thank you for joining us on our journey in textile design. Today we celebrated shibori, the treatment of itajime within shibori, which celebrates folding and clamping with objects of wood and other surfaces. We are able to celebrate something that's been passed on from generation to generation, a thousand years before flower power. That's pretty amazing to celebrate something together, which has been something from ancient culture. We are so pleased to connect with you in this way. If you like what you saw, please subscribe below. If you want more information on recipes and resources, look below in the show notes, please. We love hanging out with you and celebrating textile design. I hope it becomes as addictive to you as it does for me. We'll see you at the next episode. Thank you.